Check it out, today we're going to be going through the process of making a snap bag. This is honestly a pretty easy process so long as you have some paint markers and maybe some primer to help out the top of the surface. Now I did my first hat of this style maybe 8 years ago, but it's been some time since I got back into it and really went through one. I'm going to go after the red curved rim in this video. All these came from an old inventory I had laying around that I was digging through over Christmas break, but I'll definitely put a link below to some other sites that you can grab similar stuff off of. Let's get into it. So believe it or not, this is actually a foam surface, so it doesn't work so great with the pens moving over top of it. They catch the fibers much like when you you know, paint on a t-shirt or whatnot. And it grabs and pulls a little bit. So I'm going to clear coat it just a couple times to make sure that we've got a little bit of a base coat on there. And the clear coat will definitely help prime for the markers so that their opacity is as good as it can be on the first coat. So I will be masking off the brim. I found that you know you do get some overspray and inconsistencies on the brim color when you do have some clear over top of it. For the plastic area, that's far less apparent, so no real sense in doing those, but let's get this taped up and then we can start spraying. Good to go, just gonna grab some cardboard to drop down in the back. There's no real specific clear coat or primer that you should be using. This is just the ultra clear gloss, two times from Rust-Oleum. Really common, about a three bucks a piece. The gloss is nice and it'll give it a little bit better coverage on this first pass. In the past, I've also used matte, and I do sometimes prefer that just because it gives a little bit smoother of a finish that the paint markers can go over. Nonetheless, it's gonna be pretty indifferent by the end of this. So this is a 3D surface, you're really going to want to do just some light dusting passes over top of it. You're not going to want to try and load it up. So if you just keep spraying on it, it's going to just saturate it a bunch and give you some really nasty effects. Now that's basically all I will do for the first pass. We're going to let that dry for a few minutes and then come back with another two or three probably. I'm sure this doesn't look any different on the camera, but you can definitely feel that there, there is some tackiness on there. We did get some laid down, but you really don't want much more than that for the first pass especially. You're just trying to build up a little catch on all those larger fibers, and then you can come back with the other ones and build off of that. Definitely feel that it's nice and dry now. Had a second coat. Five more minutes and then round three. All right, let's hit it with the last coat. Looks good to go. Say no beanie baby. So in the event that I have a trailing edge come on down into the brim, I'm gonna leave the masking tape in the way just so I don't have any extra little bits getting down there. Got a little sketch prepared up, so now it's time to transfer. Fold my piece in half, get an idea where the center line is. Now this is a curved surface, so keeping lines straight on the curved area is always a tricky challenge. Everything naturally looks like it wants to also bend with stuff. Now if you're like me and always have trouble starting with one side of your piece and, and you know trailing off too far to the next side, starting in the middle really forces you to get those you know, two center letters or the single center letter all put in place and then working back from those and you know shift the other ones out as necessary to fit the, the real center in there. So despite this being a little bit different way to start and you obviously having to have a sketch ahead of time, it does allow you to more you know, appropriately position that so it, it looks good in the end. And it forces you to maybe uh, cut off different sections of those other letters as required. And you can see the, the paint marker is writing pretty nicely on here. You know, those are just three really light coats of the primer. Like I mentioned before, you know, painting on a t-shirt is next to impossible. You, you get, you know, it catches on every single little fiber and there's just so much friction there. But here, you know, a couple coats, you can barely even tell they're on there. It's going to give it a nice starting base coat to really work off of. Throughout this video, you're going to see me have to cover sections multiple times. So like I mentioned earlier, the fact that this is a fabric, it's going to soak in those paint markers really, really easily. And not only is the surface porous, but the finish on it is a little bit rough. And earlier I equated it to drawing on a t-shirt, and that really holds true because you're going to be drawing on something that's also giving and you know pushing and moving around with your marker, so you're not actually able to put a ton more pressure on and actually grind in some paint. The process definitely slows down because of that, but I still like using these far more than using alcohol markers or anything like that. Still having the ability to go over a section a few times and get the contrast or the opacity of a lighter color on top of something else, having ability to drop those lighter colors on top of darker colors is easily the best reason to use paint markers, and it gets you more vibrant colors after all. If you were to just use alcohol markers on this, yes they would set in, but they still wouldn't have kind of that brighter finish we're used to seeing with paint markers. The teal color I was using in this piece was having a little bit of trouble getting juiced. That was really just because I wasn't able to put enough pressure down and actually get it to flow too well. 
Even though I was juicing it off to the side, I struggled most with getting that color working. That's one of the MTN acrylics, and I haven't seen much trouble with those on other surfaces, but all the Molotiles worked really good. And then I was also using some Montana colors on the black outline and the white highlights. If you're going to try anything like this, or painting on fabric in general, just be sure to have those highest opacities and the you know, best flowing markers on your hands. <laughs> Ironically enough, stickers were my big catalyst to getting into graffiti. Hats were one of those first things that I made a bunch of, really even before I made a bunch of t-shirts and stuff. A lot of people in high school liked the, the fact that I had made one or two for myself, and they wanted their own with their names or you know football numbers and stuff on them. So that was a pretty cool project to work on. And that was definitely a, a small customer base to start, but it was cool to learn some new techniques and try a bunch of different things out. Now regardless of my drawing abilities, the quality of you know making the hats was definitely a little bit spottier than this one. To get the paint markers to work well, I would load up the pat section with you know five or ten coats of white paint, and that would work well and look great on a shelf and all. But after you wore it for a while, that paint started to crack because it was such a thick coating on there. So any any crack or pressure on that hat would totally just crush the paint off, and it would look terrible. So that was part of my reason for just doing a couple of those clear coats. I really didn't want to build up a big kind of layer that was then easily going to flake off. This is kind of a foam surface anyway, so it didn't really hold the paint perfectly. So nonetheless, you know, you could load it up a bunch and get it to look really nice for a one-off. You then definitely run the risk of wearability later down the road. I definitely felt the couple coats of primer were perfect with, you know, not too bad opacity on the first couple passes of colors. And then the final coat of primer was definitely much needed to make sure that none of these colors are really going anywhere. I accidentally stripped off the tape before remembering I wanted to do an extra clear coat at the end for some extra protection. So let's get to that now. I can't say I've seen too many people doing the trucker cap style recently. I'll have to go find the supplier of these hats as I bought a bunch of them a while back. I'll put that in the description down below if anybody's interested in trying it out themselves. Now I can't remember if I've ever seen someone paint on something like a standard baseball cap that's a little more of a canvas material, but after some primer and painting on that I'm sure you get some pretty cool results and you know a little bit of variation between just the mesh back that I've seen many people do time and time again. My original interest in doing these hats came after watching a channel here on YouTube. I had to go look it up and it looks like the artist goes as the name Bape One right now. I don't quite remember it being that as you know the current connotation to the Bape branding, but nonetheless they had some pretty crazy hats that they were putting together. I believe it's an artist out of Asia and there are still a ton of videos up on that channel, so I'll be sure to link that over there. You guys can check out some of those original inspirations of some of my own work. This artist pretty much used explicitly Posca's, now I don't really have any more on hand at this time. And I don't even remember using them too uh, specifically way back when. I'm not sure if they primed their caps at all. That was something I came up with to try and you know better the opacity of markers. But the quality on each of the caps is definitely some pretty cool stuff. Try not to mind the resolution of those old images. I'm really not sure if the issue was my camera or just the ability to take a photo that was also in focus.
covers the process of me putting together this hat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to spray that like button if you found the content engaging or maybe some of the tips helpful. I post weekly videos like this, so also consider joining the crew by subscribing. The content might be a piece of art like this, a formal review, or even a tutorial. I'll catch you guys next week. That's going to do it for me. Peace. Say no beanie, baby.